a little while ago on this channel, we spoke about Huska. Now, Huska is a castle in the Czech Republic that is supposedly the gateway to hell. Well, today we're going to be going back to the Czech Republic, to a location that's only about an hour and a half away from Huska Castle. Now, this location is not a castle. From the outside, it just looks like a a strange church. However, if anything these last few years have taught us is that sometimes things aren't always as they seem. And this peculiar church might have some symbolism that points to something pretty nefarious. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Now, as most of you know, the Mockingbird Media and the powers that be behind all these media companies have been coming down pretty hard on those of us who are trying to deliver some sort of truth in our work. This channel has been eligible for monetization for a while now, and we did put our application in to be monetized. We were approved by AdSense, but for the past couple of months, YouTube has remained processing it. Now, here's the thing. If we were to have opened up a drama channel where all we did was talk crap about other people, we would have definitely been monetized. But the fact that we are trying to breach on fringe topics to get to the truth of what's happening, YouTube has been pretty slow to give us the ads. And as you guys can probably assume, running a channel like Esoteric Atlanta does take a very long time. It takes a long time to research, to film, and to edit. We do try to get two to three videos out a week, and we will continue to do that regardless of whether YouTube monetizes us or not. However, if you would like to support the channel and help us out, there is a Patreon page down below. If that's not something you can do right now, we totally understand the the world is going topsy-turvy, we are in the middle of a war, so we totally understand and we thank you for your support nonetheless. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today we're going to be talking about the Church of Bones. The Church of Bones, or Sedlec Ossuary, is a small Roman Catholic church in the Czech Republic. The chapel is beneath the cemetery that's known as the All Saints Cemetery, and this cemetery is what gave fame originally to this church. In 1278, there was an abbot there who was named Henry, Henry the Abbot. He lived at the monastery, and King Adhikar II sent Henry the Abbot to the Holy Land. Now, we remember Adhikar II from our video on Huska Castle, and again, I will place a link to that video down below. Adhikar II was responsible for building Huska Castle as a way to try to keep the demons from the pit of hell contained. Well, the story goes that while Henry the Abbot was in the Holy Lands, he picked up some dirt or some earth from Calvary. Calvary, of course, is a very, very, very important place for Christians. This is where Jesus Christ was crucified. But well, when Henry the Abbot returned back to his monastery, he took some of the dirt from Calgary and he spread the dirt around the cemetery. This was almost like a blessing, not with holy water, but with holy earth. So you can imagine this cemetery became prime real estate for death in all of this area of Europe. And then if we move forward in history, around the 14th century, Europe experienced the Black Death. Now, the Black Plague was an actual 
plague. You could see people dying everywhere. Not, not this craziness that we have going on now, but like a legitimate plague. And so of course this upped the body count for this cemetery. And this is when they built the Gothic church that has an upper and a lower level. The lower level became like an ossuary that could take in massive amounts of bodies. This is a lot like we saw in the catacombs in Italy, because at this point, from what I have now learned, uh, Catholics didn't really or still don't really believe in burning bodies. So they got to have a place to put these bodies. And so during this time, around 1511, they got a monk to start to go through the bones, to clean the bones, to organize the bones. Now it is said that this monk was half blind. I don't really know what the significance of that is, except for maybe the bodies were so grotesque that they wanted a monk that couldn't really see. So maybe he wouldn't be traumatized by all these plague-ridden bodies? Now, the Schwarzenberg family is an aristocratic elitist family that has members in both the Czech Republic and in Germany. Now, in my opinion, this is when the story of the Church of Bones gets really, really fascinating. We know that all the Illuminati families, well, most of them anyway, are from Germanic descent. We also know that these Illuminati, Cabal, or Deep State families have been around for a very long time and have not only infiltrated our political systems globally, but have also infiltrated our religious churches. We have a deep church. Now the Catholic church was infiltrated a long, long, long time ago. We know that Vatican, as in the Vatican City, means the head of the serpent. We also know that our current Pope and many Popes of the past have not actually been Christian, but Luciferian. We also know from the Act of 1871 here in the United States that the three stars on DC's flag represent the military of America, the city of London, and the Vatican, the Vatican being the worship of Lucifer and the coming of the new world order under Lucifer. Yes, the thing that Trump is fighting right now for humanity. We know that this New World Order is also called the Death Cult because they do partake in human sacrifice. We know this is not just conspiracy. We know from Epstein's island all the, the temples and the, the chapels that they had on the island that weren't Christian and all the bones and skulls that have been found on the island that were possibly from missing children and humans that had been trafficked, trafficked to be their sacrifices. We know that the Clinton Foundation is now under heavy scrutiny because of its involvement in Haiti. They weren't there in Haiti helping out. They have been using Haiti as a resource for children for a very long time. So keeping all of that in mind, let's get back to the Church of Bones and the Schwarzenberg family. It was in 1870 that the Schwarzenberg family got involved. They hired an artist to come into this chapel and design the bones into art pieces. These art installations with all these bones is now what drives tourism to this Church of Bones. In fact, this church gets about 200,000 tourists a year. Now, two of the most famous pieces in the Church of Bones is the chandelier, which is said to hold every part of the human body and the coat of arms that is the Schwarzenberg's coat of arms. Appropriately enough, this Church of Bones was also the inspiration for Dr. Satan's office in the movie, The House of a Thousand Corpse.
I mean, they tell us everything in the movies. The entertainment industry is part of their machine to indoctrinate us. Now, another thing about the church is there are gold skull and crossbones on the chapel as well as the fence. Now, this struck me as odd. The skull and crossbones are a huge Illuminati symbol. We see them as meaning death or poison, but the Illuminati has been using this symbolism and this sorcery for a very, very long time. In a previous video, we spoke about Himmler in the Nazi, in the Third Reich, in his obsession with the occult. Now in Vivalberg Castle, again, we have a video on this and I will link it below. Himmler set up what he wanted to become basically the Mecca of the New World Order. Now I won't go into too much detail because again, you can watch that video, which will be linked below. But Himmler created these special rings that he would send out to his SS members. And these rings had the skull and crossbones on them. The skull and crossbones are also very famously used by Yale University in their secret society called Skull and Bones. This is also called the Order or Order 322 or the Brotherhood of Death. Members of the Skull and Bones Society are called Bones, just Bones, or they're also called members of the Order. This order was founded in 1832 by a man named Russell Taft with 12 other accomplices. Now, Russell Taft, that name might sound familiar because he is the father of the 27th president William Taft. You see, there's a lot of people in our government today who are part of the deep state that were a part of this skull and bones society, like the Bushes and John Kerry and many, many, many others. Now, the skull and bones society, they are extremely racist. Here's the thing, the Illuminati, the deep state are extremely racist. They believe that the pure Aryan bloodline is the superior bloodline. And if you look on the um, rules of the secret society, most of the members have to be of European or specifically German descent. Now the place where skull and bones meet is called the tomb. I mean, they're the brotherhood of death, right? So I guess it's appropriate that their meeting room, their assembly hall be called the tomb. Now the interesting thing about this building is it has no windows. Obviously it has no windows for a reason. They don't want anybody looking in to see what it is they're doing. There's also a helicopter landing pad on the roof specifically for private helicopters. Again, we're talking about the global elite. Now, something I found quite interesting and comical too is that the Skull and Bones members in the society set their clocks off by five minutes. It's because they don't wanna be on the same time as the barbarians, meaning us. I mean, that's really what they think of us. You think Nancy Pelosi actually cares about humanity? If she did, we would have got another stimulus check, but it's because of Nancy Pelosi and her little minions that the people have been left high and dry, whereas Trump and most of the Republican Party have tried to give more stimulus to the people. Guys, the deep state people are not for us. They think we're sheep. They laugh at us behind our backs. Biden and Harris laugh at us behind our backs. They also kidnap our children and use them for their religious practices. Another interesting thing about the Skull and Bone Society is that it's said to still control the CIA. I can totally believe that. Now, skull and crossbones, as we see on the Church of Bones in 
the Czech Republic, as well as the Skull and Bones Society here in Yale, and with Hemmler's men and all these secret societies, they're symbolic of, of, of a symbolism used by sorcerers. And these sorcerers use the skull and bones to gain more power. We, we're starting to understand that more now, again, with Epstein's Island. The using of these children in terrible ways, in their faith, believe, they believe that they're taking that child's life force. Children in the regular world or in the Christian world or in the good side of humanity, we see children as pure. Most people want to protect children. Well, the negative, the bad, can't create on its own. It has to pervert the good. And so they also see children as valuable. But instead of being there to protect children, they use them to take their life force. In fact, it is said that if you join this satanic group of people, your loyalty to the organization trumps your loyalty to your own family. And a lot of people in these satanic cults pledge allegiance to the satanic cult by offering up their firstborn child. Now the cross and bone symbols also remind us of our own mortality. We do know that the elites like to try to prolong their mortality. The, one of the rules of Satanism or Luciferianism is do what thou wilt. In the Christian faith, we treat others as we would have them treat us. We honor the Ten Commandments to be better people. But in the satanic practice, it's all about perversion. This is why they drink the blood of children. And as we now know, eat them. It's called a pedivore. Look it up. And this idea of, of cannibalism is what brought people like Somerset Belenoff to our attention. You see her daughter, Karina, as we said in one of our videos, which again, I'll link below, allegedly owns a restaurant called Hollydale in Los Angeles, which is a cannibal club. Some of your favorite movie stars, like Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks, have been to this cannibal club. So all in all, it appears that this Church of Bones in the Czech Republic that is on the outside just a tourist spot of crazy art installation with an interesting history, in my opinion, has something else going on. I'm very curious about the Schwarzenberg family. We know that with these 13 different bloodlines, that a lot of times they carry different last names than the actual bloodline name. For example, we know, or at least those of us who have done our homework and our research, know that people like Bill Gates is a Rockefeller. Mark Zuckerberg is a Rockefeller, but they have different last names because you have to follow the women sometimes, the mothers, and see exactly where it reverts back to. And we have to acknowledge that when the Schwarzenbergs came into this church, things started to change. There became a morbid beauty to death and the skull and the crossbones showed up. Now we do know that this group of people likes to mock Jesus, likes to spit in the face of God. So the fact that there was earth that was scattered from Calgary on this property is interesting to me. Did the deep state take over this property because they knew it had been touched by the Christ? Are there tunnels under this property? Do they use this property as a portal? And has this property like Huska Castle become another gateway to hell? All right, guys, give me your opinions in the comment below. I would actually like to go to this church just to see it for myself. I really would love to go to the Czech Republic anyway. That's somewhere I've never been. I'd love to go to Prague. I hear the Czech Republic is beautiful and fun. I'd just love to see everything there from Huska Castle to the Church of Bones. So let me know if you've been there. Did you find it weird? Do you think there's something nefarious going on? Do you know of the Schwarzenberg family? Have you heard of the Skull and Bones Club? Give me your op opinions down below. All right, thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music and to Todd Roderick for helping me 
produce this video and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.